This is Earth Radio. And now here's human music. What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gum Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Chevy Blazer courtesy of Turner Chevrolet in Harrisburg, PA. And so I've actually I've never reviewed the Blazer. I know it came out last year as an all-new model for Chevy, of course, kind of revived from the dead, so to speak, though. But having said that, there are yet some changes for the 2020 Chevy Blazer. So of course I will be going over all of those for you guys as well as everything else. So what do you say? Let's cut right to an end. As always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Blazer. First one being the L starting at $29,995. One LT starting at $33,495. Two LT starting at $33,995. Three LT for $38,195. RS for $41,795 and lastly the Premier starting at $43,895 and so for this first two trim levels they actually come only available as a front wheel drive setup however for the 2LT and 3LT if you wanted to go all wheel drive simply add $2,000 and for the RS and Premier if you wanted to go all wheel drive with those two simply add $2,900 to any of those prices and so as you can imagine with all of those trim levels available there are several different engine setups several meaning three. First particular engine setup is going to belong to the L and the 1LT. This one is going to be powered by a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 193 horsepower at 6300 rpm, 188 pound feet of torque available at 4400 rpm, power sent to the front wheels through a nine speed automatic giving you MPG numbers coming in at 21 city 27 highway course taking regular unleaded fuel and then the next engine setup belonging to the 2LT and 3LT and this is the standard engine setup by the way that I don't believe is actually quite out at the time of this video but it will be that is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 230 horsepower at 5,000 rpm 258 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 1500 to 4,000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through again a nine speed automatic and once again, there are no official MPG numbers available quite yet because, again, it is a new engine option for the Blazer. But if I were to take a guess on that, though, I would imagine the combined MPG numbers would come in at around 24 miles per gallon. That's based off the 2-liter turbocharged engine found in the Chevy Equinox. So that's going to be my guess. But the last engine setup and the one we are paired up with today belonging to the RS and Premier trim levels is going to be a 3.6-liter direct-injected V6 putting out 308 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 270 pound-feet of torque available at 5,000 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels, once again through a nine-speed automatic, giving you zero to 60 time, approximately 6.1 seconds. That's actually pretty decent. We're gonna test that out in a little bit in the rain, but still, we're gonna test it out a little bit there. MPG numbers coming in at 19 city, 26 highway, and by the way, auto start stop system. I didn't mention that, that comes standard as well. So that's gonna save you a little bit of MPGs when you come up to a red light or a stop sign, because it will shut the engine off. And then the second you take your foot off the brake, it will automatically turn it back on. And by the way, you can disable that feature if it does start to annoy you. I always like to mention that too. But having mentioned all of that, there are a few different drive modes actually available just behind the shifter, including two wheel drive, all-wheel drive driving mode, also a sport mode, an off-road mode, and a tow and a haul mode. So plenty of different options depending upon your scenario. So that's nice that that's there for you, definitely. But I actually think what we are going to do here, I just put it in sport driving mode. It did just immediately downshift for you. So it's gonna hold the RPMs at a much higher level, giving you more power on demand. Also, the throttle sensitivity is gonna be adjusted there as well. But you guys know what we have to do next. Having said all that, let's go ahead and hit the gas and let's do a quick little acceleration in the rain in our 2020 Chevy Blazer. And here we go. All right, definitely a very nice pickup. Of course, we got a V6 and this is kind of a smaller SUV, kind of, not really, but a smaller SUV. So plenty of pickup for merging onto the highway. And, and honestly, it inspires a lot of confidence in me as well because for those of you who don't know, I own a 2019 Mustang GT. I did do a little bit of drifting here in the rain, of course, on the way here, but this thing really stuck to the ground. There was no spinning whatsoever. Probably due in part because of that all-wheel drive system, but overall, definitely a very nice acceleration 
acceleration with the blazer so certainly no issues there but as always to go along with that acceleration braking is equally important and so as expected you will find four-wheel disc brakes with the blazer and actually as far as the braking feel goes I found it to be a very smooth braking feel it's not something I typically say but this braking feel is a little bit different than a lot of the other SUVs that I've test driven and reviewed in its class it doesn't have that initial bite that I get with my Mustang but it's not a brake pedal delay either it's just a very nice smooth braking feel it's honestly quite nice I really like it so definitely no issues there for me touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front you will find a McPherson strut front suspension in the back an independent multi-link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes that is probably the very first thing I noticed when I started driving the blazer it is incredibly smooth we have so many road imperfections here in PA and the blazer has been soaking them up beautifully so certainly a very smooth ride definitely very impressed there as far as steering feel goes that is also very on point I would say it's even comparable to the Mazda CX-5 which in my opinion has probably the heaviest weighted steering wheel of all SUVs kind of in this class but definitely more on the heavier side of things which is a good thing it gives you more driver feedback better connection to the road I hate the steering wheels that are loosey-goosey because it doesn't really give you that immediate feedback if you need it to swerve around something or something like that so definitely a very nice weight to the steering wheel touching on cabin noise has been perfectly fine so far for me today in my short test drive the only thing I've really been hearing is a little bit of the rain on the windshield but that is about it and touching on visibility, I can actually see perfectly fine out the back. Sometimes with SUVs, those second row headrests kind of protrude up a little bit and kind of take up a lot of the visibility. But with the Blazer, it's kind of a wider setup, so the headrests are more towards the side. So for that reason, I can actually see perfectly fine out the back. So that's definitely a plus as well. But so anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this new 2020 Chevy Blazer. All right, you guys, and so here she is, what is probably the best looking Chevy SUV, in my opinion. This thing definitely has a very aggressive, very nice look to it. So let's go ahead and start up front here. Front end is actually gonna differ depending upon the trim level. For example, the RS is gonna give you more black accents towards the bottom, essentially. LTs are gonna give you a matte black front finish at the bottom, and the Premier is gonna give you more body colored finishes with some silver trim finishes actually as well. But do would also mention looking at that bow tie logo up front for the LT trim levels, typically you will find that gold colored logo. However, if you were to go with the RS or Premier, you're gonna find the black one that you are currently looking at of course but now taking a look at the headlights hid headlights will come standard for all trim levels and they will of course come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they will turn on automatically for you so you never have to worry about that led daytime running lights also coming standard and i know somebody's going to ask this by the way as far as that headlight setup goes the top lighting is actually your led daytime running lights and then the lights just below are actually your hid headlights the actual headlights are located at the bottom whereas the led daytime running lights are located up top nonetheless let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one and actually let me show you guys the top first because black roof rails will come with the three LT trim level and the RS that is of course what you are looking at right now silver roof rails will come with the premier however the two LT and below you will not find roof rails but did would also mention up front there that a pillar is going to be finished in a gloss black and that kind of ties together with the floating roof line towards the back also finished in a gloss black there of course you have your blazer lettering found on the driver and passenger side front doors in typical Chevy fashion of course and take a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors that come standard actually and you will find integrated turn signals with the three LT trim level and up as well but take a step back a little bit of course rear privacy glass for all trim levels and taking a look down at the side skirts you will find matte black side skirts for just about all trim levels but the Premier. Premier is actually going to give you body colored side skirts if you wanted to go that route, so I didn't want to mention it. Taking a look at the wheel setup, 18 inch aluminum alloys will come with just about all trim levels, the L, 1LT, 2LT, 3LT, and then if you jump up to the RS or Premier, you're going to find 20 inch aluminum alloys, and they will differentiate actually with design. The RS is going to give you a dark finish, whereas the Premier is going to give you a silver finish. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back. Of course, you have that shark fin antenna up top. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light rear window wiper of course as well but Chevy actually did a very good job with the back of this one of course that black bow tie logo to tie in with the front and actually LED taillights for 
all trim levels across the board. A lot of other manufacturers will only give you those LED taillights if you were to jump up to the very top trim level, but with the Blazer, you actually get it in the very bottom as well. So I think that's absolutely excellent. To tie along with that, there's actually LED license plate lighting I found as well. So LEDs all the way around and they actually continue on the inside. So I'll go over that in a little bit too. And for all trim levels, you will actually find dual exhaust outlets with circular tips if you were to go with one of the LT trim levels. And that is of course what you guys are looking at right now. Rectangular tips for the S and rectangular tips integrated into the rear fascia for the Premier. That is actually a pretty cool look, but nonetheless, I think you guys all know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And so we're now making our way to the back. When it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a power lift gate if you were to go with the 3LT trim level and up, of course. You will actually find a hands-free lift gate if you were to go with the RS or Premier trim levels. Once opened up, cargo capacity behind that second row will come in at 30.5 cubic feet. And I did actually find there is a lot going on back there. I was definitely pleasantly surprised. For instance, LED lighting, of course, in the cargo area. And like I said, LED lighting is gonna continue throughout the vehicle, but there is also some in floor storage I found as well found around that spare tire of course towards the edges so definitely also a good thing and actually to fold down that second row it is a 60 40 split by the way to fold down that second row there were levers found in the cargo area so it was super easy to do and a super quick fold down as well you need to do is simply pull those levers and they folded right down and by the way if you were to do that cargo capacity comes in at 64.2 cubic feet so actually a good bit of space back there so definitely a nice setup to the cargo area but then making our way to the rear seats rear legroom comes in at 39.6 inches which i gotta admit was a ton for reference i'm at even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there basically a ton of space back there so even if you're six foot five i bet you would still fit back there but also rear ventilation is actually going to come standard on all trim levels those rear passengers will also find a rear center armrest with cup holders as well and once again of course led lighting in the back but Make our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable front seats will come with the L trim level. You will find an eight-way power driver's seat with the one LT trim level and up. Adding to that, if you go with a three LT trim level and up, you will find a six-way power adjustable passenger seat. Cloth finishes are gonna come with the L, one LT, two LT. You will actually get a perforated leather finish if you were to go with the other trim levels. Heated front seats for the three LT trim level and up and ventilated front seats if you were to go with the Premier. But now taking a look at the steering wheel, it is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It is leather wrapped for all trim levels, power adjustable for the Premier trim level and heated for the RS and the Premier trim level. And that heated steering wheel is definitely very nice on super cold days in Pennsylvania like today, of course. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. I did want to start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Chevy logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch and of course that circular button in the middle, that is going to be your remote start. So that is definitely a plus warming the blazer up on super cold days before we actually get inside. But to start this one, actually all I am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and there is a push button start found just to the right of the gauge display. And so once started up, speaking of those gauges, gauges will do a full sweep, tachometers on your left, speedometers on your right, fuel information on the very top. And of course you will find a digital setup front and center, which by the way can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side, giving you things like a digital speedometer, trip A, trip B of course, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Also your oil life, letting you know when you need your next oil change. Of course your tire pressure information, air filter life actually, it's one of the few times you'll see that. That's kind of cool battery voltage so you know when you need to change your battery so plenty of helpful information up there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the interior quality panoramic power sunroof if you're curious how to go about getting that you do have to go with the premier trim level and it is an option actually for the premier trim level adding $1,595 if you wanted it of course we don't have it today though ambient lighting can be found with the RS trim level and premier you will actually find bright sill plates with the premier as well dual zoom climate control for all trim levels across the board 
board. And of course you got your garage door controls found on the roof there for up to three different garage doors. That is gonna be for the three LT trim level and up. And overall what I most like seeing is plenty of charging ports. There's actually some charging ports I didn't tell you guys about in the second row as well, but even just in front of the shifter, you have a USB charging port as well as a regular phone charger. Do also like these fighter jet style air vents also found in the Camaro, by the way. You do have some storage just in front of the shifter, dual cup holders just behind that, a little more storage. And when you lift up underneath the armrest, you do have a 12 volt power outlet and perhaps an area to put some business cards but you guys, perhaps the very best part about the interior quality, I've, I don't think I've ever seen this in a car before. There is a glove box button just to the right of the infotainment screen here, and I'll get to that in a second. But if you press that glove box button, the glove box opens up. So say goodbye to the times where you had to manually open up a glove box you now have a button for it on the Blazer. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I like the quirkiness of that as well. You never see it on other vehicles, so that was super cool to see. But nonetheless, let's make our way to the tech display here. You will find an 8-inch colored touchscreen display coming standard across the board, all trim levels. Bluetooth and audio streaming will come with that, as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Blazer. Therefore, you have free navigation through your smartphone, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs as well. So free navigation navigation is always a nice thing, especially in the bottom trim level. Factory navigation, if you wanted that, although you don't need it, comes with the RS and Premier trim levels. And you can, of course, check out your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, six speakers can be had with the L trim level, the LT trim levels, and the RS. And then if you were to go with the Premier trim level, you will find an eight-speaker Bose Premium sound system. But we do not have that Premier, so we do have the six-speaker sound system today. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, so we'll say plenty of loudness, not a whole lot of bass going on, but it is a six speaker sound system, but loudness is definitely on point. Clarity is pretty good too, actually. So six speaker sound system will definitely get you by, but of course I'm gonna prefer the Bose sound system because I've had them in my vehicles before and they are killer. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is of course, when you do put the Blazer in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board, all trim levels, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always, is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, also driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks. There is a tire pressure monitoring system that will come standard. But when it comes to some of the advanced safety features, perhaps the Blazer has a little bit of room for improvement here. For example, to get lane change alert with side blind zone alert, you have to go with a three LT trim level and up. Also with that, you get an auto dimming rear view mirror and rear cross traffic alert. Lane keep assist is actually gonna be optional for the RS and Premier trim levels. Lane departure warning, again, optional for the RS and Premier trim levels. And those options continue once again with the RS and Premier trim levels, including a 360 degree camera, front pedestrian braking, forward collision alert, following distance indicator, and automatic emergency braking. And just so you guys know, the reason I say that is because a lot of manufacturers these days are putting those safety features standard even on the bottom trim level. For example, I tested of the new Hyundai Venue the other day with Lane Keep Assist coming standard on the very bottom trim level which i believe starts at under twenty thousand dollars so we're right around there at least but that's why i put it that way but that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on the social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold